idea. Let's create a trend of video making that revolves around people critiquing the videos made by other people. Heck, let's create a community around it, where we can then reel in other like-minded people who also have the preeminent goal of critiquing videos they perceive to be flawed. Also, let's just overlook the fact that many people in said community will not always agree with one another, and some will be better at either citing their sources or explaining their points than others will be. Let's also overlook the notion that this could very well lead to a lot of community infighting in the form of multiple degree chains, which people screaming, no, you're wrong, to the high YouTube heavens. What could possibly go wrong? Why, my good ponder, you appear to be a slight bit perturbed by this video you're covering, the origin of which you have yet to reveal to us. Yeah, it's almost like I'm commentating on a two and a half hour long live stream where the people involved can't articulately argue their points in any sort of concise or consistent manner. Surprise! So, backstory. Some guy named Cinematic Venom made a video where he disagreed with the Nostalgia Critics review of the movie Jack. A fucking course this has to be that guy with the glasses related. Three commentators by the names of Illini Guy 34, Gem99 Show, and Chirp Rocks did a god awful triop commentary on the video. Doodle Tones did a commentary on that triop. Then, out of the bowels of hell, the mass star maker, Illini Guy, Chirp Rocks, and the Illogical Reaper all got together to do a live stream on Doodle's commentary. And this is where my soul lays barren, children. Let's begin. Movie reviews way back in 2009, and contrary to popular belief, it was not because of the nostalgia critic, aka Doug Walker. It was actually the cinema snob who was the first one that I saw, and the one who inspired me to start my own movie reviewing series, though I would later become a fan of Doug's work as well. Interesting history lesson, buddy. Really? In your next video, please tell us an interesting story about how the dust fell on your shelves, because, you know, that is more important than the Nostalgia Critic topic itself. Ooh, boy, Jim, he's introducing the video. He has so far barely spent any time on this introduction as he leads up to him saying that he is actually a fan of Doug Walker's work. You're jumping the gun way too fast on this one, buddy. Take your ADD pills and sit down. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, okay. uh, well, Jim's point was that him saying this about the Nostalgia Critic is kind of pointless because in the long run, what does this have to do with the video? Just yeah. say, like, this is, this is why later on in the video I just say, hey, why can't the intro be, I like the songs of critics videos, but he has a tendency to contradict himself, so we're gonna do that here. That was the essence of Cinematic Venom's introduction. He just happened to be more in depth with his explanation regarding his viewing relationship with Doug Walker's work. He wanted to prefix the video with the fact that while he was not inspired by Doug to do movie reviews, he still considers himself a fan of his work. Because, like, yeah. why, do we need like this, why do we need this lecture? Because it provides context for Venom's opinions on Doug. It's meant to act as a counter to those who might say he only dislikes the review because he doesn't like the Nostalgia Critic. In fact, the entire minute and 50 second introduction before he starts talking about the actual movie, Jack, is meant to highlight that Venom can not only still enjoy a movie that the Nostalgia Critic talks badly about, it also presents various other instances where Doug Walker has contradicted himself in his reviews. Meaning he's providing examples to cite his argument. Fucking stop! Yeah, why do we need the history lesson about him liking Nostalgia Critic? What's so wrong with just... Alright, I like the Nostalgia Critic, but he has a tendency of contradicting himself, and this is one of his worst cases. Let's go into it! Illogical Reaper, why the hell are you here if you're just gonna parrot Ill and I guy's point from literally 10 seconds prior? <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. the history lesson doesn't have any relevance to it. Like, I get it if you are trying to protect yourself from fantards, but, um, the way it was executed was really bad because it just drags out the video. It could have mm -hmm. just been done in two or three sentences. The explanation about him liking Doug was 15 seconds long. You are making a mountain out of a molehill. All right. Like, and most of the time I can see his point and laugh at the movie's expense. I love The Lost World, Drop Dead Fred, I have a soft spot for good burger and jingle all the way, just to name a few. However, he often contradicts himself, ripping on certain films for one thing, like calling The Dark Knight Rises too long. You might be a little bored by it at times, because it is extremely long. You like Lord of the Rings. Dead times, I think I'm pretty short. And you made a three and a half hour miniseries based on your web show. So you think Nostalgia Critic makes good points most of the time, then go on to say that he often contradicts himself. Isn't that kind of an oxymoron? No, Jim. No, it isn't. 
Because you can make valid points while still being contradictory. Let's play a little game, Ernie. Say one time I get on the tail of Despero's movie's case for not following the book, taking too many creative liberties, and overall butchering the source material for the film. And let's just say, for the sake of hypothetical, that I'm able to sell you on the idea and make a valid point on why that doesn't work. I know, right? Crazy hypothetical. Now, to continue this hypothetical, let's just say I praise the giver for similar things to tell Despero, being that it took creative liberties and changed a lot from the source material. But I'm still able to sell you on the idea. Doodle stop. Doodle stop. Oh my god. Stop. Doodle stop. Doodle stop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Okay. okay. This, this uh, is for... like this is like um hypothetical overload right here. Yeah, actually, great. This, this technically does feel like you're just like like check. It's understandable that if you want to, like, expand your hypotheticals, but do remember, it is hypothetical. It is not simply like, oh, hey, we're going to actually take a real-life case here. We're actually discussing what could happen, not, like, what is going to happen, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Fucking what? Oh, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to use a hypothetical example as an argument because it's not a real-life situation that we can analyze and measure. Almost like it's a fucking hypothetical and the argument it's based around, you know, the idea that a nostalgic critic can make good points but does contradict himself, is a subjective matter. As in, whether or not a specific point is good is up to the viewer. Let's therein simply not address your argument and dismiss it because, my hypotheticals, none of you are worthy of my time. Yes. Frankly, it's like, if you make valid points, but you often contradict yourself, there's a problem. Yeah. And not only that, you hurt the argument, and you hurt your credibility. It's kind of like when people try to pull the whole, the whole, oh, hypocrisy doesn't make you wrong. Um, yes, it does. Chirp, you are so fucking brain dead here that this specific sentence from you is what stopped me watching this video the first run through. One, no, hypocrisy does not make you wrong. If I tell you that tracing artwork and selling it as an original commission work is bad because you can run into legal problems and have your credibility destroyed as an artist, but happen to sell traced artwork in my spare time, I'm not fucking wrong, I'm just a hypocrite. The only instances in which one can be objectively right is with facts. Hypocrisy does not invalidate facts. Two, if you make valid points, but you often contradict yourself, there's a problem. Only if you're assuming that the contradictions are present in the same points being labeled as valid points. Big surprise to probably no one, that's not at all what Cinematic Venom was inferring. Nostalgia Critic, in his long line of doing movie reviews, has made hundreds of points against various movies that, in Venom's eyes, can be considered valid, but interspersed between those points are contradictions. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, we gotta it, put a we gotta put a cap on the lid of the whole hypocrisy makes you wrong sort of thing. Cause yes, sometimes it doesn't make you wrong, but it likewise do remember it does hurt credibility, and sometimes it can make you wrong, and what and far and so forth. It also hurts your argument in the uh, long return too, if you happen to also contradict yourself on some occasions, nonetheless. <laughs> Wow, Chirp, even Starmaker had to chime in and disagree with you. Good going! Also, no Starmaker, it doesn't hurt the argument. See my previous example. Unless it's an argument regarding morality, which is not objective and therein cannot be proven with facts, hypocrisy does jack all. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be best to also talk about, like, the whole issue with the oxymoron sort of thing, since I think, Ernie, I believe you wanted us to talk about this well. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. It's like... So for me, I'm gonna pull up the uh, definition of an uh, oxymoron, and I want you to tell me if what Jim actually said would be a definition of oxymoron. <clears throat> All now, right. You mean what Ernie oxy... said? Or Ernie, or yeah, yeah, I can say that. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> oxymoron. Now, a figure of speech in which apparently contradictory terms appear in conjecture, I, e. g., faith unfaithful kept him falsely true. Yes, this would be an oxymoron. No, no it wouldn't, Illini guy. It would be an oxymoron if Venom was stating that all of Nostalgia Critic's valid points served to contradict him. But that's not what's being said. Yeah, and if anything else, well... <clears throat> as you can... Uh, eh, whatever. But I think, I think we basically... I think you guys basically get the gist of where we're going yeah. with this, so... ye. Mm-hmm. Anything else to say uh, about this point, or are we all going to move? I think 
I'm like sitting, I'm, I'm like good. looking in the chat, Sarah does. Well, if you talk about one film and states it's positives and say another film has those and they are negative, and it's what like, does yeah, one but it's is like if there's if obvious, it's, it's, yeah, but if there's obvious it's, it's, explanations for each, like, you know, with Doodle's hypothetical here, if there's a decent explanation, then no, it's not a contradiction. Oh, you mean that argument that Doodles presented that you lot talked over? The one where she presents a hypothetical where she's able to convince you that a movie is bad because it takes extensive creative liberties and doesn't adhere to the original source material of the book, but they're in praise as a second movie for taking extensive creative liberties and doesn't adhere to the original source material of the book? With her criteria focusing around the movies following the original source material, yes, it would be contradictory for her to condemn a series of creative choices that she praises in a separate title. If her initial complaint is, it's bad for a movie to stray so far from the material in the book, it would be contradictory to her stance for her to praise a movie for doing that very same thing, and vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> like, Esperado didn't do, didn't take the creative liberties to make itself good, but yet the giver does the same creative liberties, but still, but managed to make them better. If you can explain yourself, then no, it's not a contradiction. Uh. Yeah, hypotheticals, man. They're, they're, they they do too much. <laughs> also, you two do. Can you riddle us how we're missing the point? I, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm yeah. curious, actually. I love how the chat clearly understands that they're fucking up. Please explain yourself. Yeah, because we re like. I understand that like at some points we're gonna miss a point or so, but. You want to explain yourself uh, in the case yes. of... If anybody says in the chat that we missed the point, can you please explain? Gee, maybe this is something you should have asked Doodles to explain for you before you decided to make a movie about her. Please, yeah. just go ahead. Like, here. instead of, like, here's the thing. If you want to go ahead and throw around that we're missing the point, really explain yourself. Don't simply just like, oh, hey, you're missing the point and not elaborate on anything. It kind of makes you lazy on your part. You mean how y'all were too lazy to ask for clarifications on points beforehand? Whoops! Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, but, like, Although, to be fair, the chat only has, like, 250 characters, so... Point taken, but even then, you can still at least, you know, put in more, uh, more of the point or at least the point that you want to talk about. Despite there being a reason for you not to be able to articulately explain this point we're demanding from you, as well as the fact that there's a fucking time delay because it's a live stream, and the fact that most people cannot type nearly as fast as they think or speak, and there are other people in the chat interjecting at the same time as you, so it's very likely that if you cannot explain in 250 characters, then your interjections will be broken up and very likely lost amidst the comments from other users. We expect those of you in the chat to be able to perfectly explain to us why we're wrong while we present the notion that we're right. You're an idiot. Mm. Exactly. So, not really much an excuse. And likewise, well, if anything, you're more than happy to, like, um... We'll come back to this whenever you're ready to actually uh, put in the... Right. Oh, there we go. Um, okay, apparently said... we're twisting the definition of oxymoron. To our favor? Huh? Oh my god, this is painful. And oh, being... We're contra... Said being I... corrected. Okay. So, let me... So, basically... Google is sort of untrusted in this case. Or, I, I, I know that basically but, like, it's just like broad or so, but... Is it the dictionary? Oh, good lord. Okay, it's... are there any other definitions of oxymoron? Yes. Uh, I mean, like, why is we're not twisting it? We're basically just... Like, I read the entire... Uh, entire, uh, entire I read the entire definition of its own t uh, <clears throat> t from uh, fucking Google. I don't know how else we're twisting this. You're twisting the situation. That's how else. Kind of, like, ugh. But, likewise, we'll, I guess we'll have to hear it when he's, um... Okay, dude, no, that's not what we mean. Hold on. <clears throat> you just solved the word contradictory and applied it to Jim Reed's restating that Cinematic Venom was saying Nostalgia Critic was contradictory. No, what we're saying is that because he often makes good points, yet he also often contradicts himself. Because he often makes good points, yet he also often contradicts himself. Reaper, are you high? I think the idea is what we were trying to is that what we were trying to go for since we weren't in the mood to listen to her hypothetical. But even then, we already debunked that. So like, if you could explain why you like Vector, but yet have a problem with Hans from Fire Emblem, then. How is it a contradiction? They're obvious someone's doing something wrong. Right. Now, granted, if they're booing the exact same thing in the exact same way, 
fine, but... Oh wow, it's almost like that was the center focus of Doodle's hypothetical. The one that you blatantly acknowledged skipping over. Because reasons, I guess. If you explain it well enough. But if I explain it well enough, then it's not a contradiction. If you can actually explain why something works in one area but doesn't work in another, then... It congratulations. Should be good. God, I want to strangle you. They talk to the chat and YouTube dude pops in to defend the honorable Princess Doodletone. Cinema Venom said Lord of the Rings implying in general, implying more than one, implying more than likely all three of them. In other words, it doesn't matter, Chirp, it's still a contradiction either way. Second. A anything, Chirp? <laughs> um, I kind of want to say, why did you have to interject? Because I later explain it in this next segment. No, Chirp! No, you don't! You get on Venom's case for daring to look at a superhero movie and a fantasy movie and thinking their lengths are comparable since these films are structured differently. You never again address the idea of Venom referring to Lord of the Rings as a plural for the series as a whole. Stop lying! Yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, if, um... I guess basically the point being that likewise we're basically the trip already addressed this later on, so this was, uh, how you say, uh, redundant. Are you all so dense you don't remember the contents of the commentary you're arguing in favor of? Seriously comparing a comic book action movie to a fantasy movie? It's totally not like the two are structured differently, and that the average viewer would expect certain elements in each one. Sure, try and make it your head out of the clouds. Different genres have no relevance to the discussion at hand. What matters is link. In Cinema Venom's mind, getting out of one movie's case for one thing and not another's case for the same thing is a contradiction. It is to him hypocrisy. But, you wanna know what's funny? Cinema Venom doesn't quite understand one of the key elements of viewing here, as what one movie can do right, like Lord of the Rings, may not be done right in another, like the Dark Knight. Perhaps in Venom's opinion, the Dark Knight is the different genre points. Unlike in Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings may have so much more to offer than he could do without, as the Dark Knight doesn't have. Pause. Yeah, all right. Uh, I, 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 no offense, but has it occurred to you that maybe different genres have different expectations? like And have different ways of being executed? Yeah, like, for example, you, you expect... if see you're expecting world building and explanation and magic with something like sci-fi. You're expecting like... The science uh, and the robots. technology aspect. Scientific technology, and then... aliens, whatever. And then, like, example, with super movies, you're expecting, well, fighting superheroes. What do you expect? Oh my god, you're all just. <sighs> Stop drowning out the arguments. You clearly have no idea what you're talking about. In terms of length, the expected contents of a genre are not a factor. It's the amount of content, the pacing, and the movie's ability to keep the audience engaged. A superhero movie and a fantasy movie can have all the elements expected of them individually, but can differ dramatically in how those elements are presented and how the movie is paced, resulting in a drastically different opinion on them by the viewer. For example, the 2015 Fantastic Four movie is an hour and 40 minutes. As an origin story, it has been critically panned for its bad writing, poorly expressed characters, and overall terrible plot and pacing. The 2012 Dark Knight Returns Part 1, despite being an hour and 16 minutes, has been praised for its pacing, character portrayals, historical exposition, world development, and overall plot. Despite the Fantastic Four also being a superhero movie and having an additional 20 minutes to its runtime, the pacing is significantly worse than that of The Dark Knight. And having watched both of them myself, I can say that, big shock, it ain't a good idea to wait until the last 10 minutes to introduce your villain. That's bad pacing. Also. Reed and Ben had a weird, subtle, romantic thing going on the whole movie, and by the time they finally confronted each other, they really should have just kissed. It would have made the whole thing at least somewhat more bearable. Now crawl back into your respective corners and form a cohesive and relevant counter to the arguments being presented. Given the context Venom does bring up, but this can be a thing that does expand on in this video. And actually, come to think of it, Cinema Venom's example is even more retarded, given that Doug's video on The Dark Knight says you might be extremely bored by it because it's extremely long. There's nothing saying that he's bothered by it, just that he thinks there's a possibility that due to the fact of its rare length, it may not keep other audience retention. So it's not like there's any actual hypocrisy going on here. Oh shit, did I start doing your commentary for you already? My bad. He rips on Jean. Okay, I remember. Okay, I remember this point. He was saying how 
it doesn't matter if they were structured differently. It was still, it's still long, right? Is that what she said? I'm, I think I, I, I mean, think I could, it's like, it's right, like, you know, you expect, it's like you expect a superhero action movie to use its time in a certain manner, whereas a fantasy you know, movie in, a, in no, another manner. I wasn't talking about what Chirp said. Oh, what Doodle oh, said. Okay. What Doodle said was, it's like, it doesn't matter, it's still long, right? That's not what she said, don't say yes. That's not what she said, don't say yes. She explicitly makes note that one movie can do justice to its length better than another. That's not what she said, don't say yes. That's not what she said, don't say yes. She, yeah, she's, she's like saying- But here's the thing. Uh, Motherfucker! Genre doesn't To be fair, matter. Cinematic Venom's kind of an idiot, so- He is, he is. Who knows, guys? Hypocrisy done made you wrong! They talk to the chat again. If the movie is full of nothing but padding, then, well, you're obviously the audience... gonna get bored by it. Exactly. The audience is going to pick up, and the audience is going to get bored. Therefore, you need to, you need to execute it properly. Perhaps in Doug's opinion, The Dark Knight was too lengthy because there was nothing there to back up that length, unlike in Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings may have so much more to offer in it that the length couldn't do without, that the Dark Knight doesn't have. Of course we don't know, given the context Venom does bring up, but this can be a thing that does expand on in this video. I hate all of you. If it's long and it's, you know, entertaining all throughout, then you've done a good job, because now it's earned its, you know, really long length, with, you know, depending on how long it might be, like two and a half hours. Illini guy, I know you may have been proud of yourself, but let's not bring in this live stream as an example of a well-paced and consistently entertaining time, shall we? <laughs> like the best, yeah, the best example I could probably say is look at Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. That movie is like what two hours long, almost three, I want to say. But from start to finish, there's always something happening. Sure, there's probably a couple of segments that are where the characters are probably sitting and relaxing and probably not doing anything, but you're, you as the audience member is still entertained. You still want to know what is going to happen next. And that's definitely where the debatable part comes into play, since I certainly had reservations about how that movie was paced. All right, so, so that would be more of a point towards cinematic venom, right? Yes. It, yeah. That's I think... what we were trying to make. You were... Trying to make a note that Cinematic Venom was the one right here. So you're disagreeing with your own video. The video you're defending against Doodle Tone's commentary. Chirp. Stop talking. I think it's also yeah. that, uh, I think it's also clear that I think this commentary is released for this. In this case, we may be covering both Doodle and Cinematic Venom if anyone else here has any points that they want to address towards him. Yeah, I think no part of what, what made Doodle come to that conclusion is that you were going, like, they're structured differently. It's, and it's, like, the thing about that is, like, what you said right now, that's that's more of what you really... That's more of what you really should have said. I think that's more of what you were trying to go for and saying how different movies can be long and still make it work. What you're, like, going on about how there people have different expectations for a movie like like you said you were going you said it doesn't matter whether whether it's like a batman movie or a fucking marvel movie whatever as long as as long as they use their time wisely and it's right. and it's kind of what you were going for here and i think that's what doodle was trying to go for here or what doodle was um, was I could understand for. if that's what she was trying to get to explain to me, but I think kind of it got lost with all the hypothetical and the mumbling. I think you mean it got lost with you all mumbling over it, Jesus. Hy hypothetical. I well, I don't know if she put a hypothetical here, but gee, it's almost like you didn't listen to the argument. You two do boogers off, and no one in the stream is funny. Going all the way for commercialism, the likes of Christmas Story. He complains about the Shining miniseries being unable to wrap up a scene with a simple solution, despite the aforementioned Peter Jackson saga being guilty of that even more so. He also often misses vital plot points, or just doesn't explain himself very well, like how Ben Affleck was actually bad in Daredevil. No reason, he just was. Because hmm? it's Ben Affleck. He just up. Wait, Affleck. since when was a Christmas Story known for commercialism? I mean, 
Sure, there was a lot of merchandising in the movie, but it was 1940s merchandising shown, and that was a big thing back then. Jim, you answered your own question, buddy. I'm not even needed here. Oh, you obviously didn't catch how? Well, alright, let me lead you down the path a bit. The commercialism, of course, that Cinema Venom is bringing up about Jingle All The Way being a movie that focused on a fucking action figure. In Doug's mind, this is a problem. But the 1940s merchandising, by your own admission here, is totally okay. Which again, in Venom's mind, is a contradiction on Doug's part. Also, I love how you kind of just admit to there being commercialism, but just shrug it off because it was the 1940s and it was okay back then. No, Jim, commercialism is commercialism, doesn't matter what era it's in, try again. Even then. Anything else? Uh, anything to uh, contribute here? Uh, frankly, okay, so Jim, Jim kind of added, like, you know, the part with that, um, there was, com uh, that it was 1940s commercialism. I probably should have taken that out because, well, yeah, commercialism is commercialism no matter what time period it, it, it's in. But I think, frankly, I think the point he was trying to go for was that, you know, sure, Sure, there's merchandising in it, but that's not the main focus of Christmas Story. It's literally a part of the movie's description that it's about a kid trying to get a specific toy for Christmas. Yes, I guy, it is the main focus of the story. Again, I've seen both of those movies. Both Jingle All the Way and A Christmas Story revolves around getting one specific gift for Christmas and hijinks ensuing throughout that process. In the case of the former, it's from the perspective of the parent, and in the case of the latter, it's from the perspective of the child. Also, this is something that Ill and I guy does a lot, he just kind of blames Jem for a lot of the problems in the video itself. This is dumb. Ill and I guy is the one who put the video on his channel, he clearly denoted it as being good enough by his standards to be on there. Blaming Jem for an argument you disagree with after the fact is stupid, because had you actually had a problem with it beforehand, you could have brought it up to Jem himself, or else taken that argument out of the video entirely. I should know. I have a co-op on my channel that I didn't like, and I take responsibility for not sacking it in the first place. Well, I've just covered most of Illini Guy's follow-up video to this commentary. I'm on a roll today! Yeah... Did you blow the video? Of course, the story was more about... Um, this—it's got—it's got a bunch of things going on, though. Yeah, it—it's more so like it has like more of a uh, diverse sort of story. It's like you could focus on Ralphie's story, like you could say that's kind of like the uh, main focus, since for the most part we see Ralphie, you know, always like not exactly always, but most of the time he wants this like BB Ryder gun, you know, and. Mm -hmm. He talks about it with some of his teachers who basically, like, like, like why is we you keep see telling him you'll shoot your eye out, kid. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. And yeah, <laughs> kind of, kind of that. Gee, thanks for cementing the fact that the movie's all about Ralphie getting the BB gun for Christmas, Star Maker. What would we ever do without you? And at the very end, obviously, it's his, get the right, right or BB gun. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, oh. the, like, the main focus is, you know, the family trying to celebrate Christmas, even though they're, all, like, you know, the mother is always doing housework, the dad is, um, kind of a grumpy old man, Randy is, well, the, the little brother. brother. <laughs> little yeah, brother, the little brother can be obnoxious. <laughs> You're literally just describing the characters. <laughs> yes. Yes, he can. And so... Okay, so basically, Saradus asks, uh, who was Jem, Ernie? Jem was a guy that I knew that's... There's really not much else. He used to be a commentator, but now, uh, his name is Mud. Yeah, basically, Jem is what we like to call trash. And, and he's mostly he a liar. Sharp hypocrisy that made you wrong! Yep, yeah, too. yes, yes, he is, he is a, you know, <laughs> line twice. I guess, I guess the thing is, like, I think, while I can understand that people are, are going to be criticizing Jim's points, I think somewhat that his points really shouldn't be, like, too focused on heavily. And I mean this as in, because, and I know, like, this could be a really shitty thing to say, but this is Jim we're talking about. This is mm -hmm. a person that, likewise, we have seen, you know, fail on his part. I mean, Ernie, if you'd like to go ahead and give a little bit of a backstory to that, you're free to do so. Oh no! Now Starmaker's doing it too! 
Hey, you guys want to know a secret? If you participate in a video that you have creative control over, and you do so along someone else who offers up points that you don't agree with, you are at fault for those points making it into the video. Y'all don't just get to say, it was Jim's fault, and pretend like the three of you didn't script and make this video together. <laughs> Oh, gee, let me take you back to 2015 when he... So right now these guys are going on about a past video that Jem made that has pretty much made him a joke, and which people cite when making note about how Jem doesn't understand how to argue things like sex, pornography, physical attraction, etc. What I wonder is, do you think this video will be cited for Illini Guy when people look back at him in the future as being not able to take responsibility for the content he uploads? Also, the Skype noises are slowly inching across my last nerve. Stop it. They talk about Jem, Reaper returns and then leaves, and they contemplate adding Jorm to the chat. Right. Although, with Doodles like getting onto, you know, what the reoccurring plot is in, you know, Christmas Story, in which case, well, there's a lot. It's not just Ralphie and the BB gun. Subplots don't count. Jorm joins. Jorm is someone who doesn't like Doodle Tones. Yeah. We all have a little bit of a context to try to hear in this again. Yeah. Uh, Alright, we're all ready now? Yeah. Okay, good. Um. Main plot of a Christmas story? Because while I admit there's a lot of distracting subplots, the main plot is how Ralphie wants a Red Ryder Carbine Action 200 shot range model air rifle with a compass in the stock and a sundial, and everyone telling him that he'll shoot his eye out, which he promptly does. Obviously, you missed that recurring thing, didn't you? And as for. There's the a lot of reoccurring reasons, plots. That's not the only thing. They all, and at, towards the end, they all just kind of come together with the dogs, you know, barging into the house and eating the turkey after Ralphie shoots his eye out. That is a culmination of all the subplots and the main plot of the movie coming together, which any well written movie will do at the end of its runtime. The fact that many subplots for the movie exist does not negate the main plot of the movie. Basically the other thing that you could say about. A Christmas story is it's not just about that it's also how Ralphie interacts with his brother how he interacts with his mother his father how the bullies how, yeah like how he <laughs> grows as a character this just in you guys character development now serves as the plot of a movie chirp stop and also, is, also the <laughs> listen guys, guys yeah. listen do you know uh, do you know the word for that would be what? Character development! This is the very thing that we're gonna have to talk about later in the future. For now, pause. Star Maker, you are somehow constantly cluing in on whenever these idiots are wrong and are somehow still going along with it! Goddamn! I think that just makes you the dumbest one here! What's this? <laughs> yeah. Alright, anyway, um, you guys ready to go? Or... Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, good. Yeah, right. Right. Let us continue. Being brought up. No repetition. Ow, don't have to slap me for that. Anyways, for nostalgia critic supposedly always contradicting himself. Repeat this one, bitch! Nice going. You both cut yourself off at the perfect chance of expanding on your points. Ten out of ten, what bleach again? Okay, so I'm I th I'm sorry. That... Go. Go on. That was a joke. Oh, so you weren't going to explain why the Shining series being brought up didn't count as a note against the Nostalgia Critic's general views, nor how the Nostalgia Critic actually doesn't contradict himself like Cinematic Venom says he does? Well, great! What the fuck was the point of you guys interjecting here again? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I... It's understandable where, like, Doodle could probably pull up the, like, context of, like, saying, Oh, hey, they could have explained this, but down. this was a joke. This is clearly... This is clearly Doodle... Yeah, this was clearly Doodle, hmm? Doodle's brain, having that thing set up, you know, when uh, she thinks to herself, all right, I've got to take this seriously, even though this is a, a joke. This seems to be a recurring theme with her. No, it was Doodle's making note of the fact that these two idiots opted to make a joke instead of actually arguing the segment. If you're going to make a joke, make it in tandem with an argument, not in place of one. Talking to the chat again. Okay. Also, we're more than a minute and a half into the 16 and a half minute video, and Venom here hasn't touched the video that he's covering, and it'll be another 10 seconds until he brings up the Jack review. Unless you've got an entertaining skit to lead into your video, 
The background info on your subject shouldn't drag out like you're doing here. This could have been summed up like, I like Nostalgia Critic's reviews, but I feel he has a tendency to contradict himself, and his review of Jack has various instances of this. <laughs> See how easy that was? So it's okay to not get to the video for goddamn nearly three minutes if you have an opening skit, but don't you dare try to give a minute's worth of backstory on your target. Look, I'm not saying the intro skit is a problem, but what I am asking for is a bit of consistency with your claim. Why is it okay for one but not the other? Because intro skits are entertaining? Well, so can the info that Cinema Vim here is bringing out. In fact, I could make a similar argument to your own, and it would do it just about as good. You spent two minutes not getting into the video, when we could have taken out that intro in whole. See? Same argument, same amount of criticism, i.e. none. I can tell you guys one thing, you're certainly consistent at letting inconsistency slip by. Simple explanations can prevent this whole thing from being a mess. I think we can explain that um, through this, and I know this would be somewhat of a uh, sort of a diff uh, sort of an argument, but here's the difference: we're talking about when we're talking about this. Uh, um, how we put it? Uh, cinematic venom here. He is talking about a review. When we're talking about someone that had like an intro skit, like Ernie for his triop, that's a commentary, and I believe the mo more the general purpose of a commentary is not only to basically, you know talk about the arguments in question, like, uh, how Ernie did with this tryout, but it's more so, of, like, you have to entertain your audience, too. So, for yeah. the intro skin and whatnot, even though I do see why some people could say, oh, hey, it's a bit too long, I do say, and I do see, though, that at the very least, it's supposed to be entertaining. Are you brain dead? You're just arguing the same fucking thing, but in favor of Ernie, Chirp, and Jem. Oh, it's a commentary, so it's different. No, it's goddamn fucking not, you moron. The argument at hand here is that Venom should have gotten to the meat of his video sooner, but then why is it okay for these three to do the very same thing they're criticizing Venom for? It's a commentary is not a valid response. Even if you claim that commentaries focus on arguments, that doesn't make a lick of sense because the intro skit in question here doesn't focus on any of the arguments. What makes this even fucking dumber is the fact that I could argue that Cinema Venom's video is a commentary. Big shock here, I know, but it's almost like these guys have been calling it a review at certain points of this live stream. He looks at Doug Walker's review of Jack and cuts in at various points throughout the review to argue what's being said and the logic behind it. Slap an anime avatar on him and boom, that's a fucking commentary. At least what Venom was explaining in his intro had something to do with the meat of the video itself. The triop intro skit is just, how'd you get into my house? Shut up, we have commentary material! Doodles even made note that the introduction to Venom's video may very well have been entertaining to his audience. So now you're just arguing that Venom's introduction isn't entertaining because you say so. Shut the fuck up! That's why the, the argument makes the, it makes the big difference as a whole. Yeah. Also, you know, it sets up you know jokes and storyline and the storyline for the rest of the video that continues through the end. Which isn't required in the video. It could be argued that cinematic Venom would require secondary examples of Nostalgia Critic contradicting himself as it better serves his counter arguments for the Jack review. And I know that had he not provided examples, y'all would have gotten on his case for not doing so. Examples to prove a point serve to support a video's premise. Your skits ain't necessary. Y'all just did it cause you wanted to. Which, you know, she doesn't even bother to cover. I mean, I'm not saying she had to, but it's like, there's a reason behind things. Why would she do that? Starmaker just said that commentaries are about focusing on arguments. Your intro and ending skits aren't arguments. Also, having watched them both, they were not at all relevant to the video you were covering, so shut up. Whereas Cinematic Venom is giving us a college lecture. Right. I mean, I mean yeah, you know, giving out information, background information can be entertaining, but it's like he's just playing it straight. Ernie, I will fucking wreck you. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it it's boils funny, down. It's funny because it's funny because like, uh, Duel doesn't even take into account. You said that um, the videos that both 
Ernie and Cinematic Venom were doing were of two, were of two different genres. Does anybody else find it extremely hilarious that these idiots previously acknowledged that entertainment value is tantamount to overall quality when it comes to movies, despite a difference in genres, but now have their heads so far up their asses that they think that different genres of internet videos should not be held to similar levels of entertainment quality? Like, you can spin it any way you like, but at the end of the day, you have to entertain your audience. You're arguing that it's not okay for Venom to put off starting his video because it's not entertaining, also positing that it's not relative to the video, but you're wrong there. Doodles is questioning why you're allowed to then put off starting your video with a skit that viewers may not find entertaining and which is actually not relevant to the video. You're fucking wrong! So really, it's like, it's like, oh, an opening skit can go on for, can go on for a little longer because it's an opening skit. The argument is whether or not the skit is entertaining enough to go on for so long. You don't just get to say it can be long because it's a skit. Long skits can be boring. Right? Yeah. Where, whereas if you spend most of your whereas you spend most of the beginning explaining your target, it's like Holy hell, we know. Can you just get on with the video now? You mean like how the Triops intro skit spent most of the beginning explaining Ill and I guy's introduction to Gem and Chirp and that they were going to do a commentary together? It's like, holy hell, we know. Can you just get on with the video now? You mean like that? And especially since our target is, since Cinematic Venom's target is technically the nostalgic critic, I believe that if you ever, it, it basically everyone, if you haven't been living under a rock, knows the nostalgic critic and what he does is a job, you know? So Nostalgia Critic's job is to contradict himself in movie reviews. Good to know. It's almost like that's what Cinematic Venom was introducing, you fucking idiots. Gargling each other's opinions. Said Happy Madison fans shouldn't live. People only like Hocus Pocus as a guilty pleasure and they all know it sucks. And it just comes across as uncomfortable to watch sometimes with someone forcing an opinion on you so much. Usually, however, I can ignore all of that and just enjoy the comedy for what it is. You do realize that the Happy Madison jab was a joke? Did that ever occur to you at any point? Hey, Chirp Rocks, mind listening to Cinema Venom for a bit? He even stated, and I quote, Normally I can just ignore this and enjoy the comedy, meaning he knows these are jokes, but these kind of jokes to him feel uncomfortable to watch. It's almost as if he took an entire sentence out of the picture to make him seem like a triggered plot for brains. Okay. If... Oh, good lord. <laughs> you know, okay, if they... Okay, if he can usually get past this, then... Why bring it up? Oh my god, it's an example. He's citing an example of a joke that he personally thinks went too far because it gives the audience an idea of where his boundaries lay. People, I am not even halfway through this video. Send help. If it doesn't bother you, why bring it up? Because that point right there was, what I was trying to say to Cinematic Venom was, the Nostalgia Critic is just simply trying to point out how Happy Madison should play up their comedy. Because at one point in time, I'm pretty sure Happy Madison always used toilet humor. Mm -hmm. And again, goes back to repetition. Repetition is great when you're learning a language, but when you're trying to do something new and break out of that cycle, no, it's not. So therefore, that's what the Nostalgia Critic was trying to do. And that's what I was trying to tell Cinematic Venom, that Happy Madison should do Smart comedy. Yes, because I'm sure leading a group of people who laugh at the notion of a fart joke into a closet where they can all die is just the best way to argue that smart comedy is the best way to go. Furthermore, that doesn't at all argue the fact that he personally thinks that this particular joke wasn't funny because it pushed an opinion onto the viewer. Just stating, oh, this is totally what the nostalgia critic meant though, doesn't negate nor does it argue Cinematic Venom's subjective views on humor. Well, this, is, this is one thing, this is one argument that, um, this is one argument, you know, Doodle and a lot of other people tend to bring up. Um, they always come back with the whole humor is subjective argument. Well, yes, humor is subjective, but you got to think at the same time, will the, jo will the joke end up losing its charm over time? And the answer is obviously yes. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep things, so the obvious good thing to do what Happy Madison really should do is keep things fresh, keep things yeah. interesting, keep things entertaining. Not recycle the same joke over and over again 
just because it happens to appeal to your target audience. Jorm, why the fuck are you arguing what Happy Madison should do when the point is that Venom didn't like the Nostalgia Critics joke in regards to the movie and its fans? Because, hey, it's caught up to them. Because now, you know, Ab Sandler movies are going straight to Netflix and they're still not being received well. Mm. Um, like, are you like, are you seriously... Are you seriously going to come up to me with uh, the Amy Schumer level special? Come up to me and say, oh, well, humor is subjective. Even though people unanimously agree that that special was not funny. How am I talking about Amy Schumer? Look, comedy has basic rules that comedians and writers generally abide by to make an audience laugh. There's the rule of thirds, there's shock value, there's pushing boundaries, there's subverting your audience's expectation or using reoccurring trends and themes. Amy Schumer's comedy special wasn't funny because the joke used throughout the entire thing was vagina. The shock value of talking about vaginas vanishes within the first five minutes. You cannot subvert expectations when vagina is all you're talking about. The rule of thirds fails to work when every instance of it ends in vagina. The only trend or theme is vagina. Similarly, if all the jokes in Happy Madison pertain to toilet humor, guess what gets old real fast? However, how does this argue Venomum's dislike of Doug's joke? That dislike is based on his own personal opinions and personal comedic boundaries regarding humor, which is subjective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, some funny meme also says in the comments, uh, maybe because they are arg they are arguments that actually make sense. Is that's it. Mm. Explain. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Explain. Yeah. Um, by the way, I should talk about humor as subjective for a minute. It's, um, I, I, I really don't know how to actually break this down because it's like, when you say humor is subjective, are we just simply talking about, like, humor as a whole, or are we, like, are we talking about how people are going to perceive humor? We're talking about how individuals react to humor differently. Why are you asking this as a question in a live stream where you're actively arguing the notion of subjective humor? It's, I feel it's more so of like, it's up to the viewer to actually decide whether or not a, a joke can actually be determined as funny or, you know, unfunny. It really depends on them. Yeah. Not, not humor as a whole. Almost like humor is subjective or something. Guys, call the science board. Star makers just come across a revolutionary new notion. But here's, here's what I don't like about it. It's that whenever you tell them, you know, you don't find it funny, then they'll just go and say, oh, well, humor's subjective, therefore your argument is invalid. Who the fuck are you even talking about at this point? That yeah. is really annoying. That's really annoying, and it's actually more of a uh, sort, of, sort of crappy argument. It's like, it's like you're just trying to shut down the other person for actually having an opinion. And likewise, we all perceive things differently. Much like humor, we may per like perceive different ideals, thoughts, or opinions. Yeah, like how you guys perceive this video to be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. I also bring up the fact that there's too many examples in this segment to the point where it's just cramped. Hell, you didn't even show clips from the eight crazy nights and Hocus Pocus videos despite showing clips before. It comes off as unfocused and shows that you should just get onto the fucking video that you're covering. He gave like three examples here. That's enough to get a point across. You guys later get on this case for bringing up no examples. I fucking told you that what you do! And while I can cover that then I'll hit it here. You bitch at him for bringing up no examples. But you bitch at him for bringing up three examples. That kid is what we call inconsistent. Have I harped on that point enough yet? Alright, alright. Okay, this is poor wording on my part. I meant to, you know, basically with when he's, you know, saying, I like the lost world, well, but the, you know, them bringing up, like, you know, that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie and Christmas Story. I meant that whole minute and a half. It's just all cramped and just seems unfocused. You don't get to make note that you done goofed in your video and then argue against Doodle Tones because she argued your goof. That's That was definitely poor wording on my end, although, I mean... But I think, the, yeah. but I think even though the wording was poor, I can honestly say that the message was still there. No, it really wasn't. The way it was presented, it just seemed like Illini Guy was annoyed with how many examples there were and felt that providing the examples himself made the video lose its focus. What he was saying, what he was saying was that you, you showed examples 
for one of the movies that you brought up, why didn't you show, you know, why don't you show clips for the other examples? Maybe because the clips he would have to use to prove his point were too long or scattered throughout the reviews themselves, making it easier for him to simply denote his complaints himself. Additionally, you're getting on his case for his intro segment being too long and now demanding additional clips to support what he's claiming, which would lengthen the segment further. Make up your minds! It just, it just, the, the, this whole video kind of comes across as rushed. Which video are you talking about? The try up or the live stream? Answer, it's both. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Much like how essentially you can make commentaries for like a living or so, it's presenting every day, and every now and then this kind of thing exists where it's like, oh, hey, it's rushed. And... Unless you somebody pumps out commentary daily, and it's like, oh, God, these are... Like, these, these tend to get worse over time. Well, good thing I stopped pumping out artwork on the daily. Wouldn't want to get worse over time. I said, I said this the last time in the uh, debate stream, but I'm just going to say it here too. And I know this is like off point, but I, w I just want to address this simply to for mostly the commentary community. Do remember, commentating is a hobby. If you make it a job, cool. Just don't overdo it. And I mean that as in, like, you don't want to stress yourself out that you pump videos like this, and then basically it doesn't, you know, work. Like, there's not, there's not really good points, it's not really entertaining. What the holy hell are you even going on about? This isn't even an argument. This is simply you blatantly lambasting doodle tones because she aspires to make her hobby her job. Oh fuck guys, I guess I better stop drawing. I'll never be a comic artist cause that's a hobby. But again, we'll have to save all that later. Any, uh, yes. really, for our final thoughts. Like, yeah, my apologies for like, why I did um, win. This is just when you watch some when you watch something like this, you know, you watch um, just think of like almost any commentary from Doodle Tones from like I don't know about September 2016 onward. They they have almost no rewatch value. This is probably just my opinion. Considering I rewatch Doodle Tones as commentaries while I work frequently. Yes, Jorm, it is. Subjective entertainment value! These guys aren't actually arguing the video at this point, they're just talking about how they don't like Doodle Tones' content, so I'm skipping to where they actually offer up a point about the video. Go. Yes. However, today I'm looking at his review of Francis Ford Coppola's Jack. Jack is one of my favorite films, and a lot of Doug's points are the universal criticism, most of which I can counter, but I can also see some negativity behind it, and I'll admit to a lot of its flaws when the time comes. Holy shit, Snack. I think we just found the root of the problem. So, if that's the case, why not just do a review of Jack yourself? It would accomplish the same goal, and there's nothing wrong with reviewers bringing up criticisms of works and countering them. Hell, I've done that, and I review often. Alright, good for you, Ernie. But... Maybe he just wanted to argue Doug's points directly in the form of a commentary. You know, the main purpose to what we do here in this community. I mean, shit, Ernie, you did a commentary on a guy ranting about Age of Ultron. By this logic, why didn't you just do a review of it? Honestly, it makes about as much sense as being an astounding number of fuck you. Also, because I don't want to just focus on you right now, Ernie, I have a little question for Chirp Rocks. Are you accusing him of doing this commentary simply because he's a fan of Jack? when he even claims by his own accord that he is aware the movie has its fair share of flaws, and that his intentions are to counter a lot of public claims the nostalgic critic brings up. I have no idea why I didn't hit you sooner, Holmes. Okay, alright, so, you know, why why did I say that? Because, and this is also why your comparison doesn't work. Cinematic Venom says that most of Doug's points are the universal criticisms. Universal criticisms, meaning you know, most if not everyone that has seen Jack and didn't like it have these same problems with it. Which is like, okay, if this, which means, you know, the, ar the arguments that Doug brings up in the video do not apl apply exclusively to him. So, if that's the case, then it's like, why not just do a review of Jack? And I remember Cinematic Venom said in his response to us, he's like, you know, I would just have to, you know... You know, you know, bring up the nostalgia critic, but it's like you said that they were the universal criticisms. That, which means this, which means you know, this doesn't only apply to the nostalgia critic. So like, you know, I I've seen Jack before and I've got similar problems to it too. And and it's like, like you know, 
It, you don't have, why only target the nostalgia critic? Venom said that most of his arguments are universal criticisms. Most. As in, not all. As in, Doug probably offers something additional that Venom felt inclined to cover. Furthermore, if Venom wants to do a commentary on a review, he has the right to do a commentary on a review. It's arguably more engaging to have two visibly and audibly distinct sides providing arguments and counter-arguments, rather than simply showcasing Venom providing what he thinks other people dislike about the movie, and therein arguing that against himself. It's almost like people could view that as a straw man. Dingbats, none of you had to do a commentary. You could have left a comment in Venom's video. You did it because you wanted to. Right. Okay. This also seems. This also seems to me that Doodle seems like just really seems to be pulling out two quoque fallacies left and right here. But according to Chirp, that makes y'all wrong. So sorry. Try again next time. Uh, oh wait, one more thing. Yeah, with you know, he, she brought up you know that one commentary that I did. That was you know problems that only that guy himself had. Whereas you know, like like I just said, universal criticisms. This doesn't just apply to Doug Walker. And yet Doug's personal criticisms do. Try again. Exactly. Okay. That's why I said that's why I said this in this case, this is a two quote quee fallacy. You're accusing Ernie of doing something of a of doing something of a similar nature, but it's not. You're just gr you're just grasping for straws. This coming from the guy who brought up Amy Schumer's vagina monologues. They're talking to the chat again. Yes. Okay, now here's the major problem with the movie. Jack is not being played like a 10 year old. He's being played like a kindergartner. And that's the main issue the entire world has. And honestly, it's quite easily explained. I actually feel stupid that I have to explain it. Especially to the likes of Doug Walker, who usually knows what he's talking about and is usually pretty good at analyzing films. I mean, Jack may be 10 years old, but he's been coddled and protected by his parents for a decade. He's barely been outside, he's never been to school, he's been kept away from society, so therefore he obviously would be a lot less mature than the other kids. Also, how come no one bitches over the fact that Tom Hanks in Big acted like a six-year-old and not the correct age? No. Yeah. Ew. <sighs> God. Oh no, that's different, right? Because it's not Jack. I mean, it's pretty obvious the whole movie shows that Jack is reclusive, that he's completely ignorant to everything around him. His parents are completely terrified of releasing him to the outside world, so they've pampered him like a child and just not allowed him to properly grow up. You're clearly no child psychologist. I've seen homeschooled children act more independently than Jack does in the film. God. Sure, he's sheltered, but he's not feral. Shut up, shut up, shut up. You've already heard your argument and bits with a single word. He's not feral. Obviously, he's not feral. That's what Cinema Venom is trying to get at. Jack was sheltered all of his life. Being sheltered will put a kid in a place where they'd be more innocent and more reliant on mom and dad. Jack has zero social skills and in turn would not act immediately like a 10 year old typically would. Now, as for your homeschool argument, sure, this is really a fun one for me. Aside from the fact that you're using anecdotal evidence, which doesn't debunk what Venom is saying because those would be more the exception and not the rule, I can argue anecdotal evidence with more anecdotal evidence being a first-hand victim to homeschooling fucking up one's social ability in real life. And I only had three years of the thing. Come at me. To be fair, I was also schooled via online, which means I was required to be a little bit more self-reliant, but the little bit of Jack that I am aware of, he was schooled via tutor and parents, meaning he's always had parents to rely on. And this, of course, being over the time span of all his life. And if you've seen just kids in general being away from their parents for the first time, it's alienating for them. And of course, this is talking about kindergartners, but here's the thing. Being babied all your life, you're not going to have a mentality above a kindergartner by the time you're 10. That's just common logic. Next point. He is also I can already imagine Trevor has a lot to say for this. You can go ahead. Okay. This boils down to basic psychology. Tread very lightly, Chirp. You are entering my speciality. And the reason why... Like... <sighs> okay. The reason why I said Jack was not feral is because of his parents. You know? Welp! That anticipation for Chirp not to divulge into a stupid excuse lasted all of nine seconds. When we are babies, when we are born, the first people we interact with is our parents. 
the first people to introduce socialization to us is our parents. Yes, until a certain age, until we're a toddler or until we're in preschool, the social skills that we learn are from our parents. Wow, Chirp! You understand the basic psychological development of a two-year-old! Now, you want to guess how many years older than two Jack is? And in order to start interacting with other humans our age is during the preschool age. When we start meeting more people than those inside our, our family. When we start going to school and we start interacting with children our age, our social circle expands. Oh, I'm sorry. You mean the thing that Jack didn't do? Like, you're not seriously this dense, right? This is some kind of act, yeah? <laughs> yes, our social circles expand once we're introduced to others of our own age. We start comparing ourselves to others, noticing differences that go further than those between an infant and their parents, recognizing children of the opposite gender and other races, learning how to change oneself and interact with those of a similar mental development. But Jack never did that! By the time he was three, his parents would have been keeping him hidden away because he looked like he was 12! Jack never went to preschool, was never exposed to others of his own age, never learned to compare himself to other children, never felt the pressure or incentive to grow in relation to those other children, and never sought to push himself further to either surpass or keep up with others his own age. So your psychological deconstruction is garbage. And it, and yeah, it does boil down to what the nature of the child is, whether if they're um, outgoing or not, but... Outgoing or no, children still develop tremendously from social interaction with others in their age group. Again, something Jack never did. That was the point I was trying to make. Then your point would be wrong. Hey, hey, um, hey um, how, how far are you in the video now? About... 13 minutes and 14 seconds, and I think he just interrupted Chirp's point. <laughs> oh. Do you, do you want to continue, Chirp, or is that all? Is yeah. that all? Because that's literally what the movie is all about, is how when Jack starts going to school, he starts developing into an adult, essentially. Gee, thanks for pointing out the obvious, but that's not the main complaint against the movie that Venom was addressing, and what you were pretending to argue in the triop. The complaint against Jack's behavior is that he doesn't act like a ten-year-old, to which Venom responds, Yeah, no duh, he's been sheltered his whole life. Your original counter-argument to this was, well, excuse me, but I've seen homeschooled children act more independently than Jack in the film. However, now you're saying that our social circle expands and we develop in preschool, which clearly isn't something that Jack did in the movie, effectively proving Venom right, you fucking twat. What are you even trying to do in this live stream? Are you refuting your own points? Because by God, you're getting good at it. Cause, Wait, what? Well, I mean... Okay, yeah, down more. To... What what exactly? Where are you guys at right now? We're at, we're uh, at, we're at thirteen minutes or fourteen get... seconds. Yeah. Uh, hang on, let me get the rabbit thing open. All right, All right. Get, just go on, chirp. Anyway, that's where I basically. Um, yeah, like yes, doodle. You may have been homeschooled, but you see. In order for a child to gain independence, they learn independence from others, not just your parents, but also from other people like your friends or your coworkers. Great! So another thing Jack wouldn't have done, thus indicating why he never socially advanced and failed to gain independence. By all means, keep going, Chirp. You're doing this commentary for me. And when you are constantly in an environment where you can't really thrive, then that's when it becomes a problem. I, I don't know what mm -hmm. point what point you're at, so I can't really say anything. Anybody um, else wanna? I, th I think you I, got it. I think for the most part, like I guess one thing I could probably say is like what you tried, like what Dual said about like how um, I think for like psych child psychology or whatnot, whatnot. I think you were trying to establish your credibility as someone that has you know done child psychology, if you if I'm assuming correctly. If that's the case, then how did you so royally screw up this argument? Yeah. Yeah. Then, likewise, if she had, if she, if Chirp here was at least telling, you know, 
a little bit of a backstory about you know child psychology and how she at least somewhat majors in it, then at least establishes her credibility and where she stands on this whole issue. Yeah, where she stands is with Cinematic Venom, since she just spent the last two minutes agreeing with him. Anyway, next point. Yeah. So should she, for the most part, a normal functioning human being despite the aging? A better point would be that Robin Williams is at least trying to be a child with an adult body, which isn't exactly an easy task if you've ever taken acting lessons. However, that would invalidate your point about Tom Hanks in Big, which was Tom Hanks being a child in an adult body. This could either mean two things, Chirpin. Both are equally retarded. What? This could just be you taking a pot shot at Tom Hanks, in which case no. your game owner doesn't debunk anything. You're just taking a shot where it honestly doesn't belong, and you can't claim joke because you're claiming it invalidates his point, and it does connect to your Robin Williams acting point. The second thing this could mean is you're trying to say Tom Hanks' role was a 12-year-old put into an adult body because plot convenience, but that still doesn't really debunk anything because if you break down Robin's character, it's still a kid in an adult body. They're playing similar roles, and again, people would turn a blind eye to Hanks not acting the age he's supposed to portray, but hop on Williams for the supposed same thing. Okay. My point was, it's hard for an actor to go back into their childhood and bring the child out when they are acting. Also, here's so, another thing. Mm -hmm. in, in Jack, uh, Robin Williams, that's his body. That's what he actually is. Tom Hanks, it's just some kid being put into an adult body. So that's not, so, you know, Tom Hanks, that's not the kid's actual body. It's like if, like, me and Chirps, it, it's like, it, in you know, the scene they showed, it's like, you know, what you would do if you were in someone else's body. Like, let's say if I was put in, in a girl's body, I would probably be playing with, their, with my boobs. Wow, you are all really thick. Robin Williams is a kid in an adult body. Tom Hanks is a kid in an adult body. Oh, but it's different because it's a kid put into an adult body. It's not his body. Dumbass, yes it is. In the movie Big, the main character wishes to become an adult. His body then changes into that of an adult. It's still his body. The only differences between the character's predicaments is that Jack grew into his body, whereas in Big, it was a sudden occurrence, as well as the fact that Tom Hanks' character otherwise developed normally as a child, unlike Jack, who was coddled and socially stunted. Either way, this is still a situation of children being in adult bodies. Also, unless you can bring up a clip from the movie to showcase that he was only acting that way because, fuck it, I'm in a different body, then shut up, because that's sure as hell not how I remember the movie. Also, chirp. Shut up. Oh, it's a difficult role. So what? That doesn't indicate why it's okay for people to get on Robin Williams' case for his supposedly poor acting and then not get on Tom Hanks' case for the same thing. To hell with your double standards, all of you! Chirp is dumb some more and they keep harping on this like it means something. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so last nah. thing I want to talk about, and this is going to be directed towards B Borg, and I mean no offense, dude. If you, I understand that you have legit reasons, but let's try to keep an open mind on what we're talking about. We're talking about a video here, like, you know, the actual view, review and whatnot, and we're talking about, you know, both points, both perspectives from Doodle to Ernie to possibly even Cinematic Venom in this case. Burger. I, I understand that, likewise, the need to be a, a bias is, or at least the need to be biased is strong, but... Try not to let it um, uh, overcome you, dude. Wait, Berg, did you didn't you just subscribe to Doodle recently? Hmm. Huh. And let's. Uh, <laughs> anyway, do I have to actually talk more about this? Do I not pay attention? Do I go problem? The third one, I'm not, st I'm not getting behind that. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Not touching him with a ten-foot ball. Next point. Ooh, this mother looks over <laughs> old pictures of him while. Doodle has bro people under the bus. Um, does she always uh, do this? Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> what does that, what does that have to do with what we're talking it's about? Not really. It's not really, it, it's not really something that has to do with video, but. Yeah. No, much, no, it does. As much as anyone, as much as there are people who would, um want to yeah. mention uh, what we have to understand is that we're talking about a video we're not really talking about what Urgh. doodle has done in particular in this case 
Yeah, yeah. make sure that we're talking yeah. about the content, we're not talking about the actual person. You know, except for earlier when you were just talking about Duel's content and how you don't like it rather than the video you're supposed to be addressing. Oh shit, son, did I catch that? Irrelevant talking to chat. Moving on, since all you do is tell him his acting sucks, which I guess I don't blame you for, but it was quite clearly supposed to be a joke. Um... <laughs> that was a joke, too. Uh, God. Yes, so uh, were we. No, fuck off, you don't get to put this in your video. What was the point in that? that? You waste time to just agree with him? I don't even know if that was a joke because your tone isn't any different from how you normally act. Your acting sucks. Take lessons next time. And then pretend afterwards like you were just joking. You clearly state that you aren't sure whether or not he's joking, meaning your interjection is made to address that ambiguity. This is obviously an actual point against his acting from your perspective and clearly not a joke. Moving on. Next point. If we have to spend, if we have to spend some, uh, spend at least around 30 seconds trying to explain why that was a joke, uh, chances are that 30 seconds could turn into two hours. Mm -hmm. Right, yep. Let us continue then without having to brace ourselves for two hours worth of shit. Y'all are salty. Also, Chirp mixes up what point she's supposed to be talking about. Are you kidding me? Hold up. Okay, so, some Ernie's out in this case. R Ernie's joke was also supposed to be refuting something. Doodle just pointed out it was poorly done. Okay, yeah. That's what she was doing? Hmm. Maybe she should present herself better. This coming from the idiot who thinks that having an actual point to say with a joke attached means that the whole thing is a joke and therein cannot be criticized. Bite me. That cooties are generally extracted after the age of seven. Everybody knows this. Doug, were you ever picked on? I'm not necessarily condoning the use of cooties at 10 years old, but were you ever picked on? Because I was. So was I. And me. And me. So was I. In fact, I stabbed people with writing utensils because of it. What is you three's fucking point? Seriously, you guys get on him for interjecting without a point, only to go on and interject saying that you guys have been bullied in real life. What does this bring to the argument? I know bringing up hypocrisy has become a misdemeanor due to how often it's used, but honestly, you guys are being a pack of hypocrite brand cigarettes here. Kindly cut it the fuck out. Hello, I can tell- At least- At least there was hypocrites going around stabbing people with, um, utensils. Um, the point was to kind of emphasize that Cinematic Venom pointing out bullying, um, we all get bullied. Yeah, that's... Bullying yeah. happens way more often than we would like to admit. Not to mention it was a quick gag. Oh my god, why though? Golly gee, you pointed out that bullying happens! How is this relevant to what's being said? Venom is asking Doug if he's been bullied before and is talking about the sort of things that children do to one another in order to make them feel bad about themselves. Making note that you three have been bullied before does nothing for the video, so Doodles is right. Despite you getting on Venom's case for interjecting without merit, you all then immediately do the same thing, just for a quick gag. If Venom's not allowed to do it, you fucker sure as hell don't get a pass. Pointless talking to the chat, again. I literally never even said By the way, what the fuck was that, Echo? Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, alright. Alright, okay. go. Okay. I was picked on in my teen years for having bad dandruff. <laughs> Kids find the most ridiculous things and use them to bully somebody for. It's just how kids work. It's not necessarily cooties. It's not like they're saying it to a random person. This is Jack, a grown man child. They're just looking for excuses to bully him for, which is exactly what kids do, no matter the age. You know, you've got a good point. Except for the fact that Doug's problem was that they were using cooties, which Doug said was ridiculous, even by the standards of 10 year olds. And Cinema Venom states, just a few words ago, that it's not necessarily cooties, but instead the kids being jerks and using cooties to do that. Even if it's low standards for a 10 year old, Cinema Venom is saying that they're not using cooties in that regard. In any case, Venom, that was a fucking joke, you dope. Whee! Okay, first of all, I'm, I'm sorry if, like, if anyone else has their points to talk about, but first. Hey, Mr. Ray, you missed, you're missing the stream. Come join, you fucking faggot! Ugh, anyway. Uh, to Storm and Stars, 
Um, you know, basically really just saying, guys, I was agreeing with your point, I just worded it differently, you guys are going on about humor not being subjective, I agreed. Anything you guys want to say to that before we touch this point? Okay. Um, what? Okay, uh, sure, alright. Alright. All right. And, and, moving on. Um, you guys go ahead and talk about the point that is presented here. Okay, it's like, it's like, you know, he's like, really, Cootie? It, it's not just Cootie, it's like, it, I mean, he, okay, 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 so. Ernie really is complete trash in this video. Really? Cooties? Top tier argument, 10 out of 10. He is... I, I'm just, shit, I just keep losing my train of thought. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I don't, I don't know, but it's like, but it's like, you know, Nostalgia Greg never said, you know, you know, yeah. kids don't pick on, he never said, you know, kids don't pick on other kids for no reason. He's just like, why cooties? Because kids will use any reason they can think of to pick on someone who's different from them. Something that Cinema Venom has already explained and you lot glossed over in the triop. The point here is that Doug says, why cooties? And the response is, it could have been anything. The kids just needed something to tease Jack about. This is not rocket science, people. I'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, all right, babe. Well, never return. They're replaying the argument so Ernie can regain his train of thought. I'm not. Go ahead. Okay. So, like, really, Cootie said. He said the same thing. He's like, "Were you ever picked on? I. Kids find the most ridiculous things." Yeah, you're right, but he was getting onto them for using cooties. And had they used something equally ridiculous, he would have gotten on them for using that. That's the point. Mr. A joins in. You're welcome. Ah. You gonna say, uh, Ernie, or is that about it? I, I don't know. I think I think it's just how Doodle structured this is just what's throwing me off. I think I think that's why I keep like like I'm trying to. I think that's why I'm having a hard time thinking of just <laughs> my counterpoint, just how oddly structured she put this. Really? That's what's throwing you off, huh? It's because it's like, it's like, okay, yeah, kids do get on to other kids for ridiculous things, but Sons of Greg's like, why cooties? Breathe. 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 Starmaker whines about not having time to do commentaries. They throw shade at Doodles again. Ernie fails to make a point. Dirty magazines under his bed. What are dirty magazines? I got to be really. She's, smi she's smiling at the fact that he wants dirty magazines. Yeah, how dare she smile at the fact that her son is finally acting like a normal ten-year-old boy? Fucking bitch! You want him to remain a reclusive little hermit who's alien to everything around him? Uh... Funny, because if I was caught with a dirty magazine when I was 10, I guarantee you that I'd get an ass whooping. And I doubt I'm alone. <coughs> I would have gotten the talk. With the belt nearby. Well, you see... When the man and the woman... Ugh, oh, good God! No! What? Hey, it's the point! Look at it go! Cinema Venom's point was the fact that Jack is for once acting like a regular kid. You three probably already were normal kids and weren't as sheltered as Jack. Uh, so to see Jack finally do what a normal kid would do and, you know, escaping that box of hey, he's not acting like a 10 year old showing development, it's obvious the mother would want to see that. Especially if they wanted him to be a normal kid to begin with, as hinted by the movie sending him to school. Your anecdotes do nothing within context. Check this. Uh, your, oh, and your, okay. Okay. And okay. your okay. argument does nothing in context because here's the thing. Because here's the thing. Dirty magazines. If, um, if looking at dirty magazines is the normal act of a ten-year-old, then why, if someone is a normal ten-year-old, get the talk or a beating from their parents? This yeah, is just one thing I don't really seem to understand here. Wait. What? What? The triop brought up the notion of ten-year-olds being beaten for having dirty magazines. Like, let me get this. Let me make sure I heard this right. 
If looking at dirty magazines is normal for a 10 year old, then why would a 10 year old be beaten for having dirty magazines? You're saying that if this is normal behavior, then why would those in the triop get beaten for it? Bitch! I got beaten for staying up past my bedtime. I got beaten for dragging a hundred pound plant pot across an expensive floor. I got beaten for punching my little sister so hard she threw up on me. This is all normal stuff for a child, relatively. Big surprise, I still got a spanking for it, you moron. Just because it's normal for a 10 year old doesn't mean that parents of typical 10 year olds want to see their kids looking at dirty magazines. The difference here is that Jack isn't a normal 10 year old. So the fact that he is curious about such things is indicative of an air of normalcy entering his life, which his mother is happy about. Like, yeah. Because like m most parents, that's the last thing you want your 10 year old to do. Exactly, that's the last thing you want your kid looking at. In normal instances, yes. Jack is not a normal child. Get that through your thick fucking skulls. Additionally, Jack will also probably never have a capable relationship in his entire life. So, looking at dirty magazines is probably all he's gonna get. Right. I mean, it, it becomes more understandable when, when they're like, when they're going through puberty, but I, I don't know many people who would go through puberty at 10. No, I don't either, because it's like, like, hey, son, what are you doing? I'm looking at Playboy. I'm proud of you. It's just, it, ugh, what? It's just some, it's some 10-year-olds shouldn't be doing, I mean, okay, if he was sneaking dirty magazines, that'd be one thing, but it's like, the mom's for that. How the hell is she supposed to know that he's interested in dirty magazines and therein show happiness at this development if he's sneaking dirty magazines around? In the context of the scene, he wasn't even sure what they were and he was asking about them! Ah! Okay, so... Uh, so, um... So Adam says, the thing is, Jack isn't a normal 10. You're treating it like he is. Wow, big surprise. The chat understands what these people fail to. 10 what? 10 years old? I mean... Um, probably that. He's a Pokemon trainer. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So, I mean, yeah, the parents want him to, you know, act like a normal 10-year-old, but they should also, you know, enforce... If they want him to act like a normal 10-year-old, should they be, like, you know, enforcing... Yeah, rules if he's a normal 10 year old. Jack has been restricted by his parents coddling for his entire life, effectively held in place by their rules about him not leaving the house or interacting with other children. The parents have actively removed those rules to give Jack room to breathe and develop as a normal child. Reinstating specific rules at this stage in his development would only serve to impede him and cause confusion where his boundaries are meant to lay. If they want him to be a normal 10 year old, because like, you know, there, there's just some things you don't let a normal 10-year-old get away with. As evidenced by these normal 10-year-olds on screen clearly getting away with it because they're in the process of reading a dirty magazine. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think it'd be even more severe back then because parents were stricter back then, I believe. You believe. Were you not existing? Shocked to no one. I was. They weren't much stricter than they are nowadays. It's simply more difficult to enforce stringent rules against saying or viewing certain things when the internet exists. Everybody's brain derails. And this is where Adam's argument seems to fall apart, though. He's, he, you know, he basically says, oh, you're treating it like he's an actual 10-year-old. Well, in this context, you know, people say, oh, you know, he's a 10-year-old in an adult's body. If that's the case, I'm going to treat him like a 10-year-old. He said you're treating him like a normal 10-year-old. Jack is not normal. Again, this is something you fail to acknowledge as a means for his behavior. I, I will I will need to say this. In the movie it's said that, you know, he's got, you know, some kind of disease, although I'll be I can't remember the name of it, although I'll say this, you know, it does age you up, but you wouldn't but a ten year old wouldn't look anything like Robin Williams. The disease he has is known as Werner syndrome, a form of progeria which is a growth disorder resulting in the rapid onset of adult and elderly characteristics in young children. While yes, the movie's portrayal of Werner Syndrome is fanciful at best, I admit that I am perturbed by your unwillingness to bother looking into the reasons Jack's portrayal is so non-factual. Illini guy, can you not recognize the levels of anger that you are brewing from deep within me? Beep boop. Right. Like, I, I'd say look it up yourself and look up, you know, the patients that, you know, do suffer from this. They 
Uh, yeah, because obviously, you know, they exaggerate the aging process and how you look for, you know, movie's sake. And because this is Robin Williams, Robin Williams was a huge star, you know, in the 90s. Actually, the movie exaggerates the speed of the onset of his growth. Werner syndrome sufferers and grow naturally until reaching puberty, at which point they begin to rapidly age. It does not exaggerate the aging process, though Williams is quite tall for someone with this condition. Ernie, why must you do this to me? Star Maker talks about bop and commentaries. Listen, you can call that oxymoron all you want. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm back. Right. No! Okay. Anyway. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just here for the sense of humor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so Slayer is also like, well, could you give examples as to why examples are examples to prove his own examples? Oh my god! Exampleception! Are you just a hypocrite? Examples on examples on examples. Shit. <laughs> All I've got to say is, if you got one good example, that's good enough. No, it's not, Chirp Rocks, because that example could have been cherry-picked, Chirp Rocks. Examples are used to highlight a series of trends, Chirp Rocks. More relevant examples are a good thing, Chirp Rocks. Why do you do this to me, Chirp Rocks? Not always. Sort of. It really depends on the argument that you're talking about. One exa like, one I, I'll go with two at most. Yeah. Two most? Yes, what, but how many examples do you need before you get a grocery list? True. Like, Maybe the MGTOWs are right. These guys are clearly being seduced by Chirp's female wiles. Why else would they recognize that their argument is stupid and then immediately turn back on that the minute she speaks? The, the, the thing I, is, I, I'd, I'd say two or three examples is where you want to go if you're trying to make an argument. Oh wow, you mean the three examples that Cinematic Venom provided that the triop acted like was a horrible, terrible, child-raping thing? Get bent! Because yeah. with one, it could be disregarded as an isolated example. Have too many, and, and it feels like you're dragging on the video. Mm -hmm. Right, and I so, think we dragged so I'd on. say if um for some people who feel that two or three examples isn't enough, let's say four or five. He's like, mm. I guess. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I mean, I, think, I mean, I guess it depends on how long it takes to a, a say what the example is. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can get behind that. Because if, right. like, all your examples are, like, two to five word statements, then you could have them in rapid succession. It's weird. <laughs> it is a very weird, complex situation. Pretty telling that none of these guys can come to a clear consensus on anything. Star Maker sucks his streams, dong. Let's go. Excuse me. Think a mom looks like that? I did not just Hey. Sometimes, all right, we just wonder what our mum looks like in, in the shower. Uh... Stop! Stop! We've heard enough. Jim, I know your little history of clopping and stuff similar to that, but then I'm here is once again joking. And of course, boy, look at me. That's maybe... exactly what we were doing. We were joking. No, shut up. You don't get to claim that you were joking and then pull out the that just makes it sound like you have mommy issues point, indicating that you clearly took offense to what was being joked about. We've heard enough. That just makes it sound like you have mommy issues. Also, good job, Chirp. You pointed out the exact reason for Cinema Venom's joke. Do you want a fucking cookie? I know. Um, yeah, that's, that's the not thing. It's like, didn't you thing. maybe look into the possibility that um, uh, Jem was joking as well? I mean, I could I, argue as well although, that it was rather poorly. It was rather poorly executed. But come yeah. on, even some, even someone as autistic as me could pick up on that social cue. Wow, Jorm, I can totally see how you're trying to be unbiased in this livestream. What with you admitting that the joke was poorly executed and completely glossing over the fact that the triop went on to have problems with Cinema Venom's joke, indicating that they didn't get the point of the joke in the first place. Well, gee, everybody gets a cookie for effort. No one is funny. We've got like nine minutes. Yeah, actual girls yep. come around. Ew, All right, girls we're ready to continue. Ew, because that's how we boys are. You, you 
just explained to Coppola how boys act, but here you don't seem to understand boys yourself. Boys look at tits and feel hormonal at this age, but don't want to admit they like girls yet, so they make fun of them all the time to hide it. It's what boys do. Okay, so Doug Walker was never bullied, and Doug Walker was never a boy. Interesting. I think I also found another reason why you decided to make this. This is all out of spite! Where, in this interjection, does Cinema Venom show spite? He was simply pointing out a contradiction with how Doug was acting. Now, yes, he's being stupid and not knowing that that was a joke as you'll go on to explain, but how here does it show spite? That just came out of the blue. Do you eat this thing? I do need to say this about Cinematic Venom's acting. You know, he said, Oh, I'm playing a character when it's like... I've seen his other videos and like even you know his live stream where he's supposed to be himself and also uh, Actually, yeah, Twitter uh, discussion. Like, he, anyone no could difference. watch. There's anyone no could watch his live stream and like he pretty much acts identically. Yeah, you're saying I'm playing an exaggerated version of myself. No, you're not. What does this have to do with arguing whether or not cinematic venom showed spite? You are not even arguing against Doodle Tone's points anymore. They continue not to argue Doodles and talk to the chat. Okay. In this world, they throw a dance for kids when apparently at this age, they're still tossing water balloons at girls. My son is six and his school throw discos. For kids younger than him too. You do realize that not every school- Anecdotal example. For kids, right? I mean, my school didn't let anybody go to dance. I'm sorry, I'm watching this at my own pace. So, uh, if, my, oh. if my comments are not exactly in sync with the video, it's telling you know why. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Okay, no problem. It's, it's, it's cool. Okay. Wait, even then, they only let the 6th graders go to the last dance of the school year in May. It just feels like you're nitpicking but, at this point. You if know, the whole thing about, about like, kids having the, the school dance oh my God, thing. Sure, Ernie. Can I can I just say like Ernie's point here was like really dumb. Yeah, it kind of was. Yeah. <laughs> on trends grade schools did not typically have dances as they were not mature enough to well most kids were not mature enough to take part in that i think yeah i think the big point really is that when like, when cinematic venom was talking about my school like my son had like disco like discos early start or whatnot it's wasn't like why is that he basically is talking about the president one that and it like that's where it makes a difference. We're like he's talking about it in his current time while we're talking like well basically we're talking about the point and Jack and whatnot and it's we're talking time about the freaking eighties slash nineties here late nineties uh, late nineties right <laughs> we're talking about the late nineties here yeah like there's only been like a almost two decades since then but a lot can happen in two freaking decades. That is true, yeah, it's true. I was born in 1992. I attended two different schools between first and second grade, 1997 and 1998 respectively, both of which threw dances for kids. Oh, what a shock, Jack came out in 1996. Go suck on a rock! So, uh, let's carry on with what, like, let's carry on, let's listen to what the, uh, Carry on, my Squidward's son. Let's, let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. It's a bad sign when the guy with the worst history out of the three of you haven't had as many shit points as you two. Chirp, if Cinema Venom is nitpicking about school dances, uh... then so does the Nostalgia Critic, because the Nostalgia Critic is bringing up a point against the school dance and his review being unrealistic. Ernie, just because not every school does that doesn't mean uh -huh. no school does. Cinema Venom bringing this up is trying to imply that it's not as far-fetched as Doug makes it out to be. Can you two just calm down and listen to the guy speak? We're gonna go back and go back. Um, uh, ironic. That yeah. tone was unbelievably spiteful. Maybe it's because Doodles is getting sick and tired of having to constantly tell you idiots that you're missing the point of the arguments. I know I sure as hell am. And Chirp! Since you're the one who was all, you obviously don't know much about child psychology, and did that ever occur to you? You don't get to bitch about someone else sounding spiteful or condescending towards your own lack of understanding. I'm just throwing yeah, that up. It, it was, it was. Yeah. I can just I mean, feel I could I could just feel, feel the salt leaking from that. Like <laughs> Ernie's point may have not been good, but 
Ernie's point may not have been good, but that doesn't excuse Doodle Tones being a mean, stinky doodoo head and hurting our feelings. I'm beyond 100% done with you people. Jesus Christ. Did you Tom, really have to get yeah, unbelievably Ernie's, angry? Yeah, I will say Ernie's point was flawed as hell, but holy it's like It's like, call your, non calm your non-existent tits, Doodle. God. When, ironically, I just don't get it. Like, people don't like it when, oh, you take this point too seriously, so don't get angry, but then turn around and do it. Um, that really doesn't do like, anybody oh, justice. Like, I like to see people trying to get Don't get this point! Holy get fucking shit. Afterwards. It's <laughs> like... Doodling, doodling the way comes off when she's lecturing her target. Um, comes yeah. off what? Her high if horse? Li if Doodle <laughs> has to go around... Sounded like she's lecturing the targets, then the chances are they're not going to want to listen to her. Just saying. What you're just saying is fucking stupid considering a commentary is basically a lecture on what a person is doing wrong. Oh no, guys! Am I being too condescending and spiteful in my video because I've been pointing out how you've all been acting like idiots, pretending like you're smart and completely failing to argue the points at hand? Well, guess how much I care! They continue to bitch about spite and actually act like children. He's not even school. Oh god. <laughs> you know what's coming up, Richard. Oh, no, no. No. <laughs> no! No! Dude, you're being offered not to go to school. Take advantage of it. Yeah, forget all those friends you made and bonded with in that pointless you know scene after being locked away for 10 years. Take advantage of none of that. It's called character development. I mean, your average kid, even with lots of friends in school, would be excited not to have to go to school. You know what? Fuck this shit. Sure, uh, yeah, character development. He's aware of that, but we'll get to that later. There For now, have... though, what Venom brings up is a side of development on Jack's part because he made so many friends and doesn't want to go back to the way things were. And speaking of which, Jim, buddy, amigo, what point are you trying to bring up? The fact that he's saying he shouldn't want to go back to school? Uh, hello, Earth the person who obviously doesn't pay attention to any movie plots. Jack was sheltered all of his life. He finally gets out, gets a kid, only to have his mom tell him that they're going back to before he was a normal kid. Would you want to go back to being sheltered after being allowed to spread your wings? Fine, that's you. Jack doesn't want to be trapped, obviously. I'm not gonna... Okay, I literally just felt like she just strengthened my point. Didn't really debunk it, but strengthened it. The whole point of character development. How? You're arguing that Jack not wanting to go back to school would be character development. Doodles is saying that because he wants to go back, that's the real sign of development. These are two completely opposite things. Right. Wait, and... wait it wasn't... <sighs> what? I, I, I'm sorry. You, you, made, you made a point about character development during that time? Because I, I guess I must have... Missed, up, missed it or something, I don't <laughs> All I said was, it's character development. That's it. But you are using it as an argumentative onus for Venom's complaint. If Venom is arguing that Jack wanting to go back to school is a sign of his growth and you're disagreeing with him, then that means you're arguing in favor of Jack not wanting to go to school. And if that wasn't the point of your statement, then, hey, guess what? That means that what you said was just a no-duh statement and had absolutely no place in the video. Chirp, you do realize that the things you say in a commentary are meant to argue the points present, right? Not simply point out that the sky is blue and water is wet. And well, then... I I mean, okay. Jem added on, and then it felt like Doodle added on. Jem directly disagreed with Venom, saying that a normal kid would be glad to not have to go to school. How are you all this goddamn fucking stupid? Alright, so... And this is all ignoring that Nostalgia Critic statement was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he was clearly <laughs> joking. How did he... Doodle didn't know this. You guys didn't know oh. this. Venom didn't mm -hmm. know this! Ah! <laughs> Mr. A, 
keep talking. You're clearly pointing out why everyone is dumb and they're taking it like $2 whores. Star Maker foreshadows the dumbest thing he will do in this video. Five, the next 20 minutes has no purpose whatsoever. He accidentally gets in a fight with Willem Dafoe, gets sent to jail, Treasure bails him out, and he stays away from public school. What the hell was the point of all that? Yeah, let's try this again. Let's try it. I think you should stay away from public school. And now he stays away from public school. All the bar, Drescher, Green, Goblin, and... Now he did it! Are you kidding me? Uh, Doug, you are a filmmaker, okay? You made, in my opinion, a incredibly well-written and creative movie to boldly flip. And you missed a huge fucking character transformation. Like, those 20 minutes were a vital part of the story, and you completely missed the point of them. Admit it and show the damn clips. Jack wants to go to school with his friends. His mom refuses. He then runs out, goes to a bar, gets into a fist fight, and then becomes afraid. He doesn't want to go to school with his friends. Can you seriously not see that huge fucking character transformation? It's a vital part of the story. Can you seriously not see the 180 that Jack's character just made? The fact that he wanted to go to school, but then he went out to the real world, realized how dangerous and scary it is, so he doesn't want to go to school. The entire character changes. The entire story changes. Are you fucking drunk when you wrote this? I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. I hope you were. Don't you think you had enough? I'll tell you what I've had enough! Excuse me, but... Hey, Ernie, sorry to interrupt, but... <laughs> I got Richard Bucket yeah. here. This is oh, my channel. Yeah, me. and I can appear to fucking know her because teleportation for plot convenience. Now get out, scrub. What the fuck, Richard? Uh, hi, random <laughs> star maker. How are you this fine day? What the fuck are you doing here? This isn't a quad up with you in it. You just appear out of fucking nowhere with no explanation other than because I can't. Throwing any form of this commentary hat to a grinding fucking oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wow, good to know you guys still think that drowning out the video you're supposed to be arguing is a good idea. Oh my god. <laughs> this, is this is some of the most okay. autistic shit I think I've ever seen. Let John, let her finish. Richard? I am going to be the one that's going to break this down. Because Richard, it's all it's, yours. Let's, go for it, yeah, man. let's let her finish her point. And you'll see why I'm. Uh, now you see, I see why I'm pulling my let, let, Let's just go. Instead of the mask, Star Maker. I do grant you, Richard is easier to call him by. That's why I've been calling Ill and I Guy 34 Ernie this whole time. But see, Ernie has been here the whole time. Random Richard here has not. Nobody who's watched this video has been introduced to him yet. That's just like Nightmare Kagamite alluding to an Ernie's video with a previous commentary I've covered. Thanks, Ernie. Clearly, you haven't learned from Kagamite's mistake. Again, though, I ask Richard. Why are you here? Any- Let me answer your question. This was supposed to be a cameo. I'm sorry. Do, do you not understand the fact that likewise this brief appearance- the, like, This brief appearance was simply a cameo. You know what? While Starmaker is talking, I want you guys to keep this in mind. Doodle Tones ran this part of her script by Starmaker before the video was released. And he had no problem with it. Keep this in the forefront of your mind as we listen. This was supposed to be a joke! How- <laughs> Oh, but apparently if you show- if you pop it and make a point and leave, you apparently are making a joke, which is I not fair! Listen, I don't care. That was supposed to be a joke. The me appearing out of fucking nowhere was supposed to be the joke. And it was a poorly executed joke. Doodles makes note of this when she points out that your introduction to the video threw off the flow of the video entirely. She also continues to make note, and what a surprise, this is the part you idiots laughed over, that referring to Starmaker as Richard instead of the mass Starmaker is going to be confusing to people who are not already familiar enough with the commentary community to know that Richard is the mass Starmaker's real name. Uh, Stem, what are you doing here? I'm here to point out how confusing it can be to have a random person that you don't know pop in and take over the video! Oh, well, that makes sense. Take it away, I guess. If the people watching don't know as much as the person who made the video does, it's the video maker's responsibility to keep them in the loop. Cameos are okay in a video, but when the cameo takes over the video, it's alienating. To make things more clear, the tryout video started with a skit that introduced the three people that would be in the commentary, Illini Guy 34 Chirprax, and Dem. So the people watching got to meet them early on and have been following them throughout the video. But nobody was introduced to Richard. Nobody knows who Richard is. Plus, you can't use the excuse that it was a joke because Starmaker stays in the video and makes an argument in it. The video is bringing in someone foreign to make a point, and then vanish as quickly as they appeared. This is flow breaking. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> I, I also need to say this. Like she said, you know, about she brought up Nightmare Kagamai's face. I know which one. Um, well, I'm going to say this for the record. When 
that video came out, I had no idea that Morgan did what she did. That being used the avatar changing watch that I had. I had no idea. So how the fuck am I supposed? How the fuck am I supposed to take responsibility or know about that ahead of time? Doodles isn't asking for you to take responsibility. She's saying that you should have seen what Nightmare Kagamine did wrong and learned from it. Nightmare Kagamine made a reference to an Illinite Day 34 video, but she called him Ernie. If somebody doesn't know that Illinite guy's name is Ernie, then they don't know whose video she's talking about. If you're doing the same thing with the Masked Star Maker in this video, this shows that you haven't learned from Nightmare Kagamine's mistake. You know what's sad? What? <laughs> what? Uh, you, you guys know my commentary on Lego Brick? What about it? Uh, no. probably, probably not, but uh, my intro skit was uh, connected to Nightmare Kagamine's outro skit of that video. Oh. <laughs> Just, oh. Mr. A, you're a bad influence. You, you shouldn't do that. Bad influences aren't good. Uh. Like, allow me to continue. Just That joke, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know, that is that's more of an inside joke if you know me around Skype. For some reason, I like to think of myself as someone that just randomly appears out of nowhere. But, but that makes it worse! If it's an inside joke, then even less people watching the video are going to understand. Someone and, that and, basically... and you know what? You know what? You know what? This isn't the first time you, like Star Ma you, you've done the Star Maker, so quite frankly... It... Uh, yeah, the joke is lost on newcomers, but this kind of joke has happened more than once in people's commentaries. No, 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 no! Just because lots of people do it doesn't make it a good joke. And Doodles isn't talking about a whole bunch of videos that made this joke. She's talking about this one. That just means that she probably wouldn't like how those videos did it either. You even disagree that the, the joke is lost in newcomers, which is one reason that Doodles didn't like it. Right. And yes, I'm very well aware of it, Adam. Yeah, I know it's not. Uh, I know it's. I know it's still out of nowhere. But that's the point. That's supposed to be the joke. The point of the joke is to confuse people. I thought the point of jokes were to make people laugh. That's supposed to be out of nowhere. That's the joke. And I know it's hard to get from newcomers and whatnot. But you keep agreeing that it's not something a newcomer would understand. But why? If you just agree that it's difficult for someone new to understand, then why did you have to speak up and get all upset about it? Um, actually, now that I think about it, are you gonna argue the other point that Doodles made? That it breaks the flow of the video? Because if not, then I don't understand why you had to cut in. It's still there. I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry if I'm making it vague for newcomers. It's just... I like to appear out of nowhere. That's all you really need to know. <laughs> That's his shtick. Yeah. yeah. Like, if yeah. anyone knows, knows Star Maker, like, I, I will admit that maybe you shouldn't refer to him as Richard because... Yeah, yeah. That, that was, yeah, I'd probably say... Aside Storm from Maker. that... Now you're agreeing that they shouldn't have called him Richard. I don't understand what the problem is. I feel like the joke worked. Yeah. And I, and I know it brought the whole... Uh, Okay, so hold on. And it still makes the base to grind, go to a grinding hall, then how do you expect her to know an inside joke? Oh, good lord. Yes, I know, the inside joke and whatnot, but she has talked to me on Skype before. But other people haven't. Doodles is intimately aware of people in the commentary community, so of course she might be aware of the inside joke. But Doodles is speaking for the people who don't know you. You already agreed with her about this. On Discord, for that matter. I know I know it's a hard thing to understand an inside joke, but it's kind of not hard to see that basically on that person just really kind of feels like a phantom, really. You don't seem like a phantom to me. You seem like a bad joke. That it, I just... It, like, even before Duel became part of the CC, like, Star Maker was known for showing up in people's videos as, like, cameos randomly. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's been a thing with him. Did you know about this? Me? Fuck no! <laughs> You're so mad. I mean, yeah. and this argument can go further back to how do you differentiate each from each other? Like, how do actors differentiate from each other? 
from their mm-hmm. humor to their dramatic, like the way they d- deliver their lines to, you know, to their facial features and whatnot. That doesn't make any sense. I thought we were talking about how the joke is too exclusionary. That doesn't have anything to do with someone's acting. Like, we all have different ways of doing things. We all want to be unique. This is Richard's way of being unique. That's fine, but you have to try to be more inclusive to the viewers. Like, calling him the mass star maker instead of Richard. Or rewriting the joke to flow better with the video. Like, um... Oh, oh! If Richard disappeared and acted like he was already in the tryout, he could say his point and then Ill and I, I Chirp, and Jem could be all confused. Like, like... Mass star maker, what are you doing here? Just timing it on the commentary. Get out! Or something like that. Did I do okay? You did wonderfully, cutie pie. Now go back to your comic. People can read about you at the end of the summer. They continue on with this for a bit. Let me be as honest here. The point I'm about to make, I know it's flawed. I know it is. Yes. It, it, it is garbage. But I think you guys are able to at least, you know... I don't know. Let's just continue. Let's let this be sort of like a little bit of a surprise. Oh yes, by all means, let's just continue and look past the fact that I just admitted that what I'm planning on arguing has no merits and is a garbage point. Yet despite that, I'm planning on arguing it anyways. Star Maker, this is not how you argue. They're talking to the chat again. All right, but yeah. Here nope. Go. And yeah, now back to whatever the fuck you guys are doing, because teleportation, and you guys are probably gonna fuck. I'm sorry, what? Sorry, what? Anyway, bye. Not so fast, Richard. This is not a plot hole in of itself, because school is a strictly moderated learning environment. A bar is not. Jack learns what's out there in the <clears> real world, you know, outside of school, and learns that it's a fucked up place, gets sent to prison, being the first time we hear anything about punishment in this movie, and learns to be afraid of the real world, thus no longer wanting to be a part of it. And that's not mentioning the fact that this misses the point of argument entirely, being that Doug was saying that the whole few minutes could be taken out of the movie and nothing would be missed. Where Venom is saying no, because this is character development, something that Chirp jumped the gun on it scene. Go ahead. All yours. Er... <laughs> oh god. You can hear the, you can hear the gallant. But I was gonna say, Ernie and Sheriff, do you guys have something to say here? Oh shit! Are you guys nervous because you're developing the ability to self-examine? Uh not really. You, you said you you said you had something to say, didn't you? Or like I remember we you did like when we first watched this. Like I said, I already said that the point was garbage. This Yeah. Like, not really. I don't uh, remember it though. Yeah, because as well we, you know, did you know did the recordings like in February no, no, or something. I don't. I don't mean. Do, I don't. I mean my point. Do, do you remember that? I was, I was saying. <laughs> Professional. I mean, kind of. Yeah, yeah. School is a moderated environment, but. Um. Did it have to do with like school being? Um. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Interaction and wait, social, wait socialization? Minute. What the frick does moderate uh, school being a moderate environment have anything to do with the character's development? Because Jack has always been within the confines of a strictly moderated environment. As he was growing up, he was confined to his own house, where his parents and tutor took care of him, protecting him from the outside world. Upon entering school, despite the expanded social freedom, there still exists individuals in a position of power that moderate the children and keep them from either getting into fights or from doing something too dangerous, i.e. a teacher. A bar, you know, that place where Jack was beaten up, doesn't have those same barriers, thus resulting in Jack being beaten up. He ventured outside the boundaries of comfort and protection offered to him by his parents and teachers and immediately discovered what happens to him without that protection. Jack comes to the conclusion the lack of barriers, the lack of protection, is scary because bad things can happen to him without it. He then wants to revert back to the safest and most strictly monitored living environment he can because he feels that he'll be the safest that way, meaning that he's not going to go to school anymore because the barriers of school are more lax than those of his home. TLDR, he learned the world was scary and that barriers and rules were put in place to protect him. CHARACTER DEVELOPMENT! It really depends on the. I guess you could say you could say it depends on the place, and 
I was gonna, I guess I should say that a bar is also moderated, but lightly. The bartender has to also keep him, like, keeping uh, all the people in check and whatnot. Like, making sure, at the very least, it doesn't get destructive in it. Same thing, you can also say the same thing with, you know, school and whatnot, but in a more stricter sort of case. Yes, but a bar's means of controlling the more difficult to control adults is to call the police on them, something that Jack ends up being subjected to. The school simply gives a child detention or talks to their parents. There are vast differences between these levels of punishment and, as Doodle said, we've not even been introduced to the concept of Jack being punished before this point in the movie. A 10 year old getting beaten up and then arrested is going to be scared. Now imagine if that 10 year old had never been punished before. That's Jack. Mm -hmm. And, and yes, I, I, just, just God damn it. Adam's making some, uh, Adam, just making points, it's like, that depends on how it's done, you're being really vague. Fucking who? The chat? The movie? Doodle tones? If it's the chat, holy shit, I don't care. If it's the movie, no, it's really not. If it's doodle tones, well, we've already seen up to this point that none of you understand half of what she's saying, so... Again, I can understand that, like, wise newcomers, you know, like, Ernie could just call me Mass Star Maker or Star Maker. Oh my god! We are not sitting through you trying to convince us all that your stupid joke was totally funny, you guys! Fucking skip! Also, quick note, despite me skipping this, I do want to address something. One complaint they bring up is that if you always have to cater to the newcomers, you always have to revert to the status quo in every video. No, you don't. You can have running storylines and running jokes, but Star Maker suddenly popping into the video and being called Richard is not a running joke in Ill and I Guys videos. It's a fucking inside joke between people in the CC in Skype calls. You can be familiar with Ill and I Guys videos, but if you aren't familiar with all of the CC, you don't get the joke. That's the point. I mean, fuck, I'm in the CC and I didn't know about this shit. Two minutes. Let's go. Um, is this really appropriate music to play? I mean, it's not like he's coming out or feeling better. He's still crying like mad in his room. This really doesn't seem to fit. Okay, that's a good point. I mean, the happy music was to show that he made friends, you know, it really made a difference in their lives and they were just happy to hang out with him. And he, he finally became one of them, you know, he finally overcame his issues. And he, he finally made a difference. But I suppose it's a good point. All right, guys, I'm back, so... Hey! You removed the background music! Why wasn't this done earlier? It was! You just refused to pay attention. He actually did it a lot when he was throwing sarcasm into the mix. Right. Off. On the same? Mm. I mean... It Okay, if we did that constantly throughout the video, then it'd get old. Yes, but you leaving it until the end of the video showcases that you clearly didn't notice him doing it at any point earlier on. Talking to the chat. The Let's go. point was that the music was better than Jack coming out of his house in a triumphant fashion instead of moping around in his uh, Am I the only one who's a little bugged by the, the seeming laziness of editing on Doodle's part? Mm. I mean, like there's I got... no, there's a notable di like there's a notable like okay so the person says something she cuts her point and then she cuts back to like somebody like at the end of a syllable or something it, it, it's getting annoying oh no the drawn out pronunciation of the r in earlier was cut off a bit she didn't cut into another argument you are nitpicking mm. all right we're almost done yeah let's... better than the soldier critic made it also be um, what was her movie point about, um, the music interjection, though? Careful, Chirp. Other people might clue into the fact that you're barely listening. They explain things to Chirp. It, to address what Venom statement, okay? Like, okay, no. Like, okay, so what happened over the course of the movie is not exactly relevant to this scene because... The main character is feeling distraught right now. He, he does, he's feeling depressed. So, happy music, despite what's going on outside, just doesn't fit. What happened earlier in the movie has no relevance. I'm sorry. Are you high? The entire movie has been building to this point. 
Eight minutes into the movie, we get a similar scene where the boys are gathered outside of Jack's home and are talking about how something scary lives there and mild, tense music plays as they discuss this. This is indicative of how people do not understand Jack. He's completely kept away from the others and that the children on the outside actually fear him. Meanwhile, Jack is playfully scaring them and being curious about the outside world. The parallel of this scene at the end of the movie is meant to indicate the switch in situations. Now Jack is the one who's being scared and the children are playfully goading him on and trying to get him to come out. Jack has been introduced to the outside world and the children do not fear him. They talk about how he's such a great friend, not a scary monster. The happy music is meant to exemplify that. Holy shit! None of you know how to write stories or frame a scene. This is... <laughs> Like, honestly, when it comes to pairing music up with um, certain situations, they have to go together. They have to match. No, they don't, you fucking idiot. That's how you play with the emotions and expectations of the audience. For instance, you can show people throwing a party but have sad music playing and use that as a means of letting the audience know that despite the celebrations, it is a sad situation for someone in the room. You can show children happily playing with a doll or an animal but put eerie music over top of it to showcase that something is wrong with the situation. Or vice versa, you can showcase a child playing happily with the corpse of an animal. Both tense and playful music could be used to accent different elements of the scene tends to reaffirm how disturbing the scene would normally be, or playful to put the audience in the mind of the innocent child. Chirp, you've already proven to me that you can't argue child psychology. Do not move into movies and scene portrayal. I swear you're just poking at all of my interests. And like, or when, otherwise... Like when you change the music for something, it completely changes the meaning of the scene. Yes, and if the music was changed to a more somber melody, then it would focus on Jack's sorrow, something the scene clearly isn't trying to do. Exactly. Like, right. like, for example, if you're trying to find a perfect wine to suit a certain meal, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't put a dessert wine with, like, a red steak. You would probably have something, like, bold, rich, and smooth in order to go with like to complement the meal taste palette is not a series of emotions furthermore you have multiple bold rich and smooth sorts of wines to choose from even then not exclusively one option and the different wines will react in different ways to the meal despite all of them complementing it so your analogy is still crap barf these points that ultimately don't amount up to anything followed by a pot shot in your final thoughts i'm just gonna go on to my own this video this video... This video. This video? It was a mess, alright? From you 3s constant inability to listen to what Cinema Venom was even saying, to taking his jokes seriously, to even sometimes making up arguments to debunk, while using anecdotal evidence that ultimately backfires because it pertains to none of the arguments Venom was even making. Were you guys <sighs> even sure what the conversation was? I mean, don't get me wrong, this video. video was littered with problems in of itself, this but this commentary video. showed me you guys only kinda knew what was going on, as there were some good points to have been made. The other 80% was a complete train wreck that didn't much argue anything. I also feel like this was a lot more of a co-op than a try-op, as Jim really didn't do that much to help out this commentary aside from being background and comic relief. Way too many of the points were either Ernie or Chirp Rocks. If you three ever decided to do a co-op, like, ever again, balance nope. out the points of Jim has something to do, he does need to pull his own weight too, you know. Mm. That's about as good as <laughs> Yeah, we're not cut off here. Well, we all, we all know Jim. Us, me and you doing a video with Jim. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Lol, Jim sucks and we're blaming him on the poor quality of the video as a whole. LOLXD! Giving them bitching about Jim. Who wants to start the final thoughts for, uh, for this video? Uh, I honestly got nothing to say about the final thoughts specifically. That's right. a real. I mean, yeah, it gives out the problems, and but it doesn't really give solutions, which would help. What the holy hell are you even talking about? Doodle says, in order, you're not listening to what Cinematic Venom is saying, you're taking jokes seriously, you're making up arguments to debunk with anecdotal evidence, Jem wasn't involved enough in the video. Numbskulls, 
any idiot with a brain would look at these critiques and think, gee, maybe I should stop doing that. If you're not listening to what's being said in the video, then pay closer attention to the arguments. If you're taking jokes too seriously, realize that they're jokes and chillax. If you make up arguments to debunk with anecdotal evidence, then both learn to understand the arguments at hand and stop using anecdotal evidence. Furthermore, she does give you a direct way to fix a problem in her saying that you need to balance out the points so that Jem is more involved. You want us to fucking spoon feed you? Again. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, take more time to, yes, that's, you know, everyone needs more time to do stuff, but it's like, no shit. I wrote this script in a day. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know, I just feel like there could have been... A little more than just say, you know, take more time to analyze something. Would you prefer she say, be smarter so you don't make stupid mistakes? Mm hmm Right. And when it comes to the nature of commentaries, I've definitely learned, you really need to understand the context of, especially when you're doing multi-degrees. You really need to understand the context of everything, because there was a couple times Mr. A pointed out a couple things like, oh, wow, I didn't notice that. Maybe I should have watched The Nostalgia Critic a couple more times. Funny how you didn't notice anything when Mr. A was pointing out the dumb crap that Triop did. You know? <laughs> yeah. Why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, it was like, uh, further back, you were like, Oh my god, you guys, you didn't get it! Nostalgia Critic was joking! Cinematic oh, yeah. Venom didn't get it! You guys didn't get it! Doodle didn't, oh, yeah, didn't get that, it! Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I'm not saying that the triop should not have been covered, but I am saying if you really want to help somebody and if you really want to see them improve, you can do that. There is a way to do that. But if you are doing commentaries or misusing your platform as a way to be spiteful, then that doesn't look good on everybody. That doesn't look good on you and that it teaches the whole entire viewers what they're watching bad habits i can't wait to see how chirp reacts to this commentary and, and believe us we we can definitely tell there was some at least at least something that sounded like spite like like you may have not intended to sound like spite, but quite frankly it sounded spiteful oh poor babies do you need your bottle more bitching <laughs> the aftermath of this video especially oh, yeah. that's what really bugs me and Okay, Ernie earned up to his mistake. I earned up to my mistake. But when you guys go and say, oh, we're pinning all the blame on Jen, it's, um, it's like, that's, what? Not, that's not a good idea. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this! This is you owning up to your mistakes. This train wreck of an excuse fest. What mistakes have you owned up to here? Because last I checked, you pretended that commentaries are allowed to have long skits because reasons. You defended yourselves bitching about Venom having three examples. You defend your misusing the term oxymoron. You use the retarded excuse that fantasy and superhero movies are different genres, so that means one is allowed to be longer than the other. You claimed fucking hypocrisy makes you wrong. You pretend to understand childhood psychology. You use the dumbass excuse that Tom Hanks is in an adult body, but Robin Williams is in an adult body. You actually directly said that points Jem made are bad and don't take responsibility for leaving them in the final project. You defend using a poorly executed joke despite everyone telling you that it was poorly executed. And you pretend like you know anything about setting up a scene or making movies to defend your arguments against Venom. How has any of this been you owning up to your mistakes? As far as I've seen from you, Chirp Rocks, you don't own up to your mistakes. You just fucking delete them. This video continues on until 2 hours, 39 minutes, and 49 seconds. Basically another 20 minutes from this point, but I'm done. These walking jokes continue to make excuses and then pretend like the whole livestream was just one big feel-good situation where they're trying to promote the people share videos and encourage others to get better and blah blah blah. Oh, and Ernie continues to claim that he's taking responsibility for the mistakes of the video. You know, despite being here and clearly defending the entire video. Chirpy even tries to throw Jem under the bus with, Oh, do you guys not remember when he threatened to kill and dox people? And you want that back in the community? Gee, Chirp, I don't know, if you're so fucking adamant about it, why would you work with Jem in the first place? 
I think I've made it blatantly clear on my opinion on this video, and that is... I don't like it. Seriously, this video had no reason to exist. If the three members of the tryup agree that the video is bad and thus have disowned it, if they actually believed that, they would not be spending two and a half hours defending a bad commentary. Because that's what this is. That's what they don't seem to understand. If you acknowledge that a video is bad, then you don't defend it in a live stream or in a follow-up video, Ernie. Honestly, there's really nothing that could have made this live stream any less shit than it was. And considering I've spent the past 17 hours scripting this video, I'm done! I'm going back to drawing cute little dandelion babies and comic pages of scary metal babies. Until next time, my cuties, smell because the world is absurd and know that you can make something better. like humor is subjective or something. Guys, call the science board. Star makers just made a cr- come across. Home.